I have been having a lot of fun lately playing around with drums and drum parts and all the extra stuff I have lying around. And uh, as you guys know, I recently built the rim drum, and most of that was with parts from Lowe's. So I went back to Lowe's today because I was thinking about making a screw apart tom. So, you know, boom, instant short concert tom, a little tiny, it's supposed to be six inch. I don't really like the way the heads fit, so see, it doesn't really work all that well because this is a four inch adapter pipe. The six inch pipe they have, I think, is a little too big, so I'm going to keep looking at that. I was going to make that or some Roctobons, you know, some big old Octobons. So when I go to Lowe's, I always get extra things. And I noticed this. That is a bucket. What is interesting about this bucket, as if you don't know that's a bucket, look at this. 12 inch head, perfectly on the bucket. Already has a nice curved bearing edge. Granted, it's cheap plastic, but I wanted to see what it would do. I thought it'd be kind of fun, see if we can make a drum out of this thing. Um, if you notice, I've already drilled the holes, and I'll show you how I lined those up, since this is a pretty cheap project. That's the way I'm doing it. I'm going to be using these lugs that I got for my next rim drum project. So you can see they have this bottom tube which won't be used for this. But if I like this drum then I'll get some standalone single ended lugs for it. So yeah, let me uh, bring you in, show you how we did the holes and let's make this an actual usable drum. I feel like we're going to have to carve a port too. Alright, see you in a second. Okay, so basically I had a sacrificial old Tama Tom and uh, the way I did this and line up the holes, normally run a piece of tape around the whole thing. I make a mark where I want the first hole and then I take the piece of tape off. I When I run the tape around it, I cut it to length. And then when I, I stretch the tape out and make it flat, I evenly space across that tape, uh, you know, each hole. So like, I believe for the last rim drum, it was every 12 and a half centimeters. And then I put the tape back on the drum, drilled all my holes and had them perfectly lined up. This was, I guess, uh, actually the junkyard way to do it. So I just put the rim on, let the lugs fall, and then since I was only drilling one hole, just drilled through right at the bottom where the lugs are, or where the uh, tension rods fall, I'm sorry. And then, you know, the lugs kind of fit. So <laughs> won't be perfect, but this thing is such a malleable plastic, I think it'll be fine. So again, most of the stuff comes from Lowe's, right? So this is just an M70, uh, M4.70 machine screw, metric. That's what seems to fit almost every lug I've tried, like into the back to screw into the lugs here. And then, because these are too long, I didn't have any shorter ones, um, I had to use an assortment of, uh, you know, I used the nut here on the top, add a little space, and then lock washer, and then some washers, so that it takes up the space. And then on the rim of this drum, uh, I should say, on the rim of this bucket, it's not yet a drum, there's this standoff, and so that's where that extra space for these screws comes from. And it pulls them kind of tight, so it, it kind of warps this rim a little bit. Again, we're working with cheap plastic. Coconut is helping out, as always. So we had to have a way to mount this thing, so this is just from my sacrificial Tama Tom. Uh, that's all it is, just a mount so I can put it on a stand. I used this really thick rubber DW mount that I had lying around and on the inside uh, the biggest sort of drum washer I could find. It's like this, it takes up the whole space. It's like a plate. So that way uh, it shouldn't break on me. So that's pretty sturdy, you know, for a 12 inch crappy bucket. So now I'm going to put the lugs on and we'll get the head on. Alright, so we've got all our lugs in place and they look rather metal. and. Uh, I'm very fortunate, uh, my buddy Chad, who actually works at this Lowe's, recently called me with a whole truckload of random drum parts, drum heads, drum rims, actually several hi-hat stands and things like that, pieces of timbales and all kinds of all kinds of pipe and clamps and stuff and electric drum triggers. Turns out they all came from Peter Hart from Hart Dynamics personal uh, storage units that I guess were sold after he passed away, which we didn't know about until well after we bought it and brought all the stuff home and we were going through it. But we'll do a whole different video. I'll talk about how we did that. But there was a bunch of cool, like older style drum heads. And here's a uh, Weather King pinstripe. It was brand new. It's a 12. And that is going to be our head for this guy. Um, it's a little dirty. I mean, everything sits in a storage unit, gets a little dirty, but it'll be fine. 
And then, uh, so after that, it's all about getting the head on with these lugs, which I'm assuming will be a little bit fiddly, but uh, I will do that and bring you back. Okay, so we've got our drum mounted. The, the mount works very well, which is nice. The rest of it is what needs work. So obviously this handle's gonna have to come off. I left it there to be funny, but it needs to come off because it rattles. And of course all these loose lug tubes rattle. And we need to drill a port because this drum does not breathe. Let's drill a support. This is obviously not the most serious project. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you, you might not be able to see it, but we got the port in there. Oh, hey, you can see me. But when you hit it, even if you tune it up, the sides flex so much that it feels like you're just hitting a wet banana. I don't know how to describe it. Super soft. Even if you tune it up. So it's tuned up pretty high, but it still, it's so squishy because all the uh, the lugs are flexing on the sides of this plastic. And they're actually being pulled outward. Never a good thing. Let's go a little higher. Yeah. Let's uh, put the camera distance away and see what it sounds like. Tuned a little lower, it sounds better, but you're never going to get rid of that shell flex. As you can see, these are coming up, starting to angle upward. So uh, in summary, can you make a drum out of a bucket? You sure can. Should you? No. <laughs> Not something I would do again. Uh, maybe for other experiments, if I came across like a metal bucket like that or something with a little more stout sides, it might work. It was a fun project, and uh, a little tape took away the resonance of the extra tube. That's what that is, electrical tape. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Happy 2021, everybody. May it be better than 2020, and I will see you guys next time. Later. When you decide to say you're sorry When you decide to say you're